it's been quite the season and it might just all come down to this. Yeah, 90 minutes, three points on the line, possibly Premiership survival as well. So much pressure. So much nerves. It's going to be an exciting night. Right, now, right, it? right, I've heard enough oh. you two. Talking stops, time for action. And now we get ready for a new season in Dingwall. Eaton goes down, penalty kick. No doubt about it. Stewart sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And it's Ross Stewart who opens his and Ross County's account for the season. He finds the back of the net again, but County have surrendered their 100% start to the season. Five goals for Celtic without response from Ross County. That is that. Three seismic points secured by the Staggies. Oh, here's trouble for County again. Tavernier across the face. And it's an own goal. Dark clouds continue to gather over Dingwall for County. The Canadian classic from the Ross County midfielder, and the drought is over. The sweetest of moments for Ollie Shaw, who surely puts this game to bed. Ross County are heading for a monumental victory. Risky ball in, and that will be a penalty. Hilton put up another through an empty ball panel. Hilton gets the break of the ball and Hilton slots into the empty nets. And Aberdeen feel the knockout blow of the Staggies. As the visitors for the third time this season have taken points off Ross County. Seventeen years old. And a seismic goal for Leo Gelda. Disappointment for Ross County, who led early in the second half. Yes. County in the ascendancy, and they've got the second equaliser. This is turning in to a relegation don't fight classic. It's not the cost the face. Was it over the line from Jakobiti? The goal is given. They've been powerful. They've been predatory. They've been absolutely ruthless. The Staggies are heading out of the drop zone into 10th place in the Scottish Premiership. Good evening and welcome to Dingwall and what is a whopping night for Ross County Football Club. Hamilton Academical make the long journey north to the Highlands this evening. They're bottom of the table but just three points separating them. Kilmarnock in 11th and the Staggies in 10th place. It's all set for a potentially season-defining match here, and it is live with us on RCFC TV. Joining me in the studio this evening, the Staggies defender, Callum Morris. Good evening, Callum. How are you? Good, you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, thank you for joining us. And Craggs, our very own Stephen Cragen. I think that ball from the, uh, the opener there is still travelling. It's probably in the door in Firth by now. Some connection. It's called a pass. Well, pa yeah. when I played, it was called a pass. Was it towards or away from your own goal? Really as long as it wasn't, <laughs> I think that was the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, decisive, decisive, ruthless, um, all things that, that count are going to have to be tonight. Absolutely, and listen, we've been in this movie before, when they've went away and they've had a good result, they've had a positive performance, and we've come back thinking, what's next? And inevitably throughout the season, there's been a letdown after it. So after watching the game here against St Mirren, I had no idea what they were going to produce at Tanadice. They produced a terrific performance, really calm, really assured, but likewise have no idea what they're going to produce tonight. And that's quite worrying with only two games to go. So they need to find consistency somewhere in these next two games. And tonight might not be about the technical side of the game or the tactical side of the game. It's about heart and desire and fight. All the things you attribute to Hamilton, match that first and foremost, then put on your game, your style of play onto the game but it's set up to be a cracker. Yeah, very much so. Callum, you've been in and around the squad, the training this week. What has the mood been like? Is it nervous? Is it excitement? What's it like? No, I think it's brilliant. The, the manager had spoke me through the week and said that, that one of the training sessions this week was the best he's seen since he's been at the club. So um, that's obviously a huge positive. Mm -hmm. um, it was a massive win down at Tanadice last weekend um, to get the clean sheet as well. And I think it was, it was the way the boys played off the ball. 
I think uh, there was a lot of hard work there winning the ball back and then going back on the counter attack, which is something we've maybe lacked this season. Um, so hopefully we can actually put the, the two consecutive wins together and uh, get the three points we need and it's another step closer to safety. Yeah, yeah of course, County haven't won back-to-back -back games in the league since the opening two rounds of the season. It's quite hard to believe. Hamilton's record in that regard is even worse. 13 months since their last back-to-back -back victories in the league. Why do you think you guys are struggling to find that consistency, to back up a good performance with another one? Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. Obviously, if you knew, if you knew the answer to that, then we'd be, we'd be, we'd be top of the league, we'd have won the league by now. But um, no, it is, it's tough. There's been a lot of changes in the squad as well. We've had a lot of injuries in the squad. Um, obviously, tonight, I think, it's the first game that we've had the same starting eleven as well, which is obviously, that could be key. Um, but I think that the season's been an up and down one from start to finish, but it's all about these last two games now. It's an old-fashioned dogfight out there between two teams that are, are struggling at the bottom of the table, but um, I've got everything to play for, so hopefully we can come out on top. Do you know, do you know what? I've only followed Ross County for one season, and already I'm getting the feeling off. They give you a little bit of hope. They give you a little bit of optimism. And the minute they give it to you, they can't wait to take a strip back off you again. You know, so you the fact, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And Roy McGregor's only forty. I mean, that, that tells you all you need to know. So, hopefully tonight they can back it up. Don't go and undo all the good work from Tanadice. You know, all the hard work and the fight and the scrap to get the game under your control and be so assured. I mean, that's a decent team, Dundee United, and they really steamroll them and then just take control of the game, snuff out any kind of threat they had. Ross Laidlaw didn't have a save to make. Don't undo all that good work. Think of all the characteristics from that game. I mean, it's easy to say go out and do the same again. That won't happen. But the characteristics of hard work, outworking your opponent, driving forward with the ball, running beyond the ball, all the things are needed tonight that happened against Dundee United. Because Hamilton are a stuffy team. They're a hard team to play against, but it will certainly be tested tonight. Yeah. yeah, well, that brings us on nicely to the Scottish Premiership table. Let's just have a quick look at how things stand tonight. It could be a, a season-defining night, as I say, for both Ross County and Hamilton Academical. Three points there you see at the bottom between County and Hamilton Academical, with Kilmarnock sandwiched in between. There are games ongoing around the country tonight. We don't really care about any of them, apart from the game here in Dingwall and the one at Rugby Park between Kelly and St Mirren. County could secure their top flight status tonight if they win, and Kilmarnock do not win, in fact, if they de defeated by St Mirren at Rugby Park this evening. In terms of remaining fixtures then, just one more to go after tonight for the Staggies that are in action against Motherwell on Sunday in a few days' time. But, Crags, that table is, is so incredibly tight. I guess the important thing is, it is in Ross County's hands whether they stay up or not. Well, it is. It's two games two season. season. There's three teams involved, so it's like a mini-league, and count to your top of the table. That's the way you have to look at it from now. After the St Mirren game, it was out of their hands. They then go to Tana Dice, produce, uh, produce that terrific performance. Kilmarnock lose at Motherwell. Suddenly, it's back in your favour again. So with two games to go, the players understand the pressure. They understand the responsibility they have to take. And that's fine understanding it in theory. But this is where it counts behind us on this big bit of green grass. They have to go and deliver it. Too often, as I said, it's been up and down and up and down. Let's get a little level of consistency. Yeah, well, it was, well, it was certainly a massive up and a week and a half ago when Ross County went to Tanadice, defeated Dundee United by two goals to nil. An impressive performance all round. And let's take a look back at some of the best of the action. Time is ticking in the race to beat the drop for Ross County. Dundee United well and truly safe. And now it's Gardai against Smith. Clever reverse ball. Spittle delivers and Jordan White breaks the deadlock for County. They've been on top. They've been dominant in Dundee. And Jordan White scores for the second time in as many games to give them the lead. Spittle delivers. It's knocked across the face. Was it over the line from Jakobiti? The goal is given. Alex Jakobiti pounces. Numberless, bloodied, but on the score sheet for County. And they lead by two to nil in this crucial bottom six showdown. Threatening to blow his whistle, and he does. Three monumental points for Ross County in Dundee. And goals from Jordan White and Alex Jakovici have propelled them to victory at Tanadice.
With results elsewhere, the Staggies are heading out of the drop zone into 10th place in the Scottish Premiership. The full-time score at Tanadice, Dundee United 0, Ross County 2. Yeah, he didn't look too happy walking off there, John Hughes, but he will have been a very, very satisfied man after that performance. He caught up earlier today with Stephen Cregan. So, John, there's two games to go. How are you feeling? And more importantly, how are the players feeling? I'm hoping that we're uh, nice and relaxed after last week's uh, performance and result. And if we can replicate that tonight, then I think uh, it'll be good enough to pick up the points. They've trained very, very well, and it was just a case of the same team. Um, and they've trained very well, and it's just about getting the focus. You know, we're coming up against a different shape with Hamilton play five at the back, and they'll be gone for it. So, you know, all the work was done days ago, and it's just to keep them relaxed and keep focused and mental. I think it's a big mental ask of them tonight to make sure that they're concentrated and focused. Do you get nervous? No, no, really. No, it's my job, I think, to be cool, calm, collected. Um, sometimes I'm at my, when I do all my work and I'm, I've coached it properly and I think all my work's done and I'm on the training pitch and then you have to trust them and let them go. And that's what, we do, that's what we've been doing. So we're here for a reason. We've gave ourselves a chance with some of the results that we've got. Yeah, there's been frustrations along the way that inconsistency performances, you know, for for a number of games is no being there, but we've gave ourselves a chance and it's in our own hands, so let's go and try and take it. Leave nothing, nothing mentally, you know, and the reason I'm saying mentally, don't be sitting after a game saying, I could have done more. Mm. Physically, make sure you get everything you've got. And you can take it, we, we, we were fantastic against Dundee United in terms of the trust and the shape and the way they went about their business. And hopefully if we can do that t tonight, then um, it'll be good enough. So that meant picking your team was easy, effectively. Yeah, it's been the first time for a while. You know, I felt last week that our distances, you know, the three in the park suits us, our mm -hmm. distances are good. But Hamilton pose a different threat from the boy Callahan for midfield getting there. You know, so Ian Vigers, he's got a big responsibility on that. But, you know, if he comes more into midfield and gets on the ball, and then Callahan has to look after him. And I still I feel, you know, some of the players are hitting good for him at the, the right time. Scared to say it, but I think Michael Garding, you know, he's been, in the last month, he's been really, really good. And hopefully we can get a star performance out of him again tonight. And you know what you get from Hamilton? You get hard work, you get a lot of energy. So your players will know they have to match that first and foremost and then try and implement their style on the Hamilton. Yep, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, we have to, we know what's coming. Brian will... You know, I've known Brian for oh, too long now. He's got me in that much trouble. <laughs> but he'll be coming here, have a go. I've been picking his brains over the last few months and he just says his best uh, form of defence is attack and lets him go. So we need to make sure we match up. John, all the best tonight. Thanks very much. Play your part in producing tomorrow's stars of the Staggies with an Academy Player Sponsorship Package for Season 2020-21. First Team Future Success relies on your support to nurture players like current number 43, Josh Reed. For more information on how you can assist the Football Academy in developing the next generation of Ross County, contact gordon.duff at rosscountyfootballclub.co.uk today. Yeah, typically confident sounding John Hughes giving a typically detailed tactical breakdown to Stephen Craigan as ever in the RCFC TV studio. And this is the team that he has named to take on the Ackies in this mightily important Scottish Premiership clash here under the Global Energy Stadium floodlights. It is perhaps unsurprisingly an unchanged lineup from the side that beat Dundee United a week and a half ago. Michael Gardine, one of those that John Hughes picked out as a man coming into form at the right time. Stephen Kelly, Blair Spittle, Jordan White, all impressive last weekend. Alex Jakovitti among the goals from the back and Col Donaldson as well, a very assured performance at centre half. Callum, I guess it's it is a surprise to see County go with the same 11 because I don't think it's actually happened this season, certainly not when John Hughes has been in charge. But in the respect that the performance last week was so good, it can't be that much of a shock that the same 11 are given the chance again. No. I think there's probably other times this season where he would have stuck with the team, bar a few injuries. But um, tonight, especially off the back of last weekend, you, you don't change that team. Um, they were brilliant in every aspect of the game. And I think tonight, 
Ian Vegas is going to be key. It was a good captain's performance from him last weekend, and if he can get on the ball and dictate the game and take the sting out of it, out of that kind of the way that Hamilton play, um, that'll stand us in good stead for the rest of the game, I think. So, not surprised in the slightest, and hopefully the boys can replicate what they did last weekend again tonight. Yeah. Craig's Ian Vigers was a player that John Hughes highlighted. He's a player we've spoken about a lot. We've had him in the studio as well. He's such an important member of this team. When he plays, he can dictate the game for Ross County. Can, but there was a slight tactical change in the midfield area. Mm. You know, earlier in the season, Stephen Kelly would have played alongside Ian Vaggers, so it was almost like a two and a one. Whereas at Tanadice, it was obvious from where we were, certainly looking at the camera angle, it was a one and a two. So Stephen Kelly played five yards further up the pitch, and it may only be five yards, but suddenly having Stephen Kelly and Jordan Tilton ahead of Ian Vaggers, that meant they were his energy. They went and gambled on the second balls. They got themselves into the box. Stephen Kelly had a shot. He had a dribble inside the box. Jordan Tilson got into the box twice also. But they can do that knowing they have that security behind them. And they also know they can, you know, probably release the ball to him if they're under a little bit of pressure. So the shape just worked. It was more of a 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, as opposed to 4-3-3. Now three, three. I know it sounds very similar, but just that little tactical switch in midfield. Stephen Kelly, for me, was always a little bit negative with his passing. Whereas against Dundee Ned, he was forced to go forward. And I think the, that trio were so dominant in the game that allowed County to get the foothold but they have to go and do it again like everyone else. Yeah, I think, I think when we saw the lineup last weekend, or perhaps the same this weekend, we looked at Jordan White potentially playing in a, in a lone striker's role and we knew, and certainly you were commenting on this before the game, that he had a big, big role to play. He had to, to knock defenders around, he had to be physically to use his power and as we're about to see here, he did that to terrific effect on Saturday. It was his best all-round performance. Because when you play as a lone striker, you have to take the responsibility on board of holding the ball up, running in behind, being the target man when the team are under pressure, getting in between centre-halves in their box, causing problems. And too often this season, he hasn't been physically strong enough. And I don't mean, you know, he's not a strong guy, but not using his body well enough. Too often he's tried to go and head the ball. And sometimes defenders knock him out of the way. Whereas what I felt during this game was he was making contact with defenders first of all, and then worrying about the ball. It upset Mark Reynolds. Here's an example. It upset Ryan. Ed uh, was it Ryan Edwards? Yes. They were really uncomfortable. They they didn't like him getting close to them. And that's the performance I've been waiting for. That's the performance someone of his ability should be getting. You know, I should be delivering and allow the team to get up the pitch. Maybe having Billy Mackay beside him for such a long time. He's allowed Billy to do the run and he's allowed Billy to go and do things and here we go. I mean the movement for that goal was terrific. He drew Mark Reynolds in, then peeled off him and got the free header. So I think all around, Callum, he was terrific on the day. He was, yeah. He's to be to be fair to me, he hasn't played a lot of football this season going at the coming up here uh, in January, but he's he's been exactly what we've needed, I think, when we've struggled in games, we've needed that focal point mm -hmm. and um he's really done that. Obviously the Celtic came up there as well. He was very good. Um and again and he put I think he played as a lone striker that night. He did, yeah. And I think that's when he's at his best. And he allows people like Michael Gardine, Blair Spittle, Reagan Charles Cook, uh, Hilton to, to do what they want you to do yeah. off the ball. He attracts defenders. And you know if you've got to put it in there. A bit like when we had Brian Graham a couple of seasons ago, you know he's going to win headers. Yeah. You know he's going to attack the ball well. If you put it in there, he will take his chances. And he did that uh, at the weekend. He looks horrible well, to play against Callum. He, he is. He's an absolute unit we of a played bloke, Vanessa, my first derby out here when he was in Vanessa, and he was a right handful and he gave me a torrid <laughs> and we won the game but he threw me about and uh, obviously the, the, the reverse fix yeah I'd like to say I got him back but um, from that day on I knew he's someone if you had him in your team he'd be great to play with not so much against I can well imagine I can well imagine another player who's made a significant impact certainly in the back end of the season probably using trickery and guile more than brawn and brutality is Blair Spittle back from his lone spell at Partick Thistle and Craggs he's someone you've been really impressed with his creativity his deliveries there's games he's played and he's been taken off and I'm thinking you know he's the spark and he was the spark last weekend I know uh, you know John spoke about Michael Gardine but I just felt the movement the, the crossing ability of Blair Spittle. He doesn't need a second invitation to put the ball into the box. He's quite happy to drift along the front line, find himself in space. He doesn't want to just stand still and be a winger. He wants to go and get involved in the game because he's played centre midfield before. We know he's got a good range of passing. He's got good energy, he's got good pace. And I just felt that was probably his best game of the season, his most consistent game of the season. And the goal typified that for me, that he didn't stand still. Here you go, he plays a ball across the pitch. He doesn't want to just stand and admire what's happening. He wants to go and make something else happen. He then finds himself in an area of the pitch where Dundee United are thinking, why is he here? He shouldn't be here. Because he becomes really difficult to pick up. 
he then delivers a little bit of quality because at that stage in the game, County were dominant. You know, they were moving the ball well, but we had said they needed to get the breakthrough. Set play, delivery, another one. So, again, he needs to back it up. So many players, for me, had their best game of the season at Tanaday. Stephen Kelly being another one. You know, the two centre-halves, another one. Uh, sorry, another two. Really assured, no mistakes. Go and do it again. Go and make sure your club are a premiership club next season. And that will be the big question mark tonight. What has Blair Spittle brought to the table from an attacking point of view, Cal? Well, I've, I've played with Blair at United, actually. And yeah, yeah. when we found out he was, he was signing, I was really excited because... He can do a lot of things that other players can't do. He's very clever. Like Craig said, he can play all over the pitch. But what I liked about performance last week is, like you touched on there, is defensively the shape was brilliant. But when we had the ball, the players had the freedom. Mm. And then United couldn't handle it. If we can do that again today, it's obviously it's going to be a tougher job. They'll play a back, back five and they'll be solid. But if we can find those gaps, there's no better players than Blair Spittle and Michael Garrett to do that. And like we've touched on with Big Jordan, if you can get those deliveries in the box, I don't care if there's three, four, five centre-backs, he's going to win headers. <laughs> so if uh, if you can get round him, uh, that'll be great. But but Spitz, now he's, he's been brilliant since he's come back from his loan spell. It probably didn't work out well for him. But I know personally what he can do. And he's starting to show that now. And hopefully he can kick on and, and perform for these last two games I would love to love see, see and Jordan White have an arm wrestle <laughs> because I'll yeah, tell I you what, what I'll I'll tell tell them. would you know? okay well there's a challenge yeah. we'll let that down there you go 45 minutes maybe <laughs> maybe 90 <laughs> get big Ross Draper oh no thank you no I'll draw the line at Draper um, I'll take him we should go oh, yeah we'll, we'll tag team them um, we should probably draw this particular discussion to a close um, we're going to take a short break and when we come back we will dig into the Aki's team news and pick out some of the visitors key threats this evening as a family-owned business, Norscott understand the need for stability, security and comfort. That's why every timber frame kit we supply is built with these in mind. Providing great design flexibility, our homes are entirely customisable to your needs. And with a wide range of adaptable set and bespoke designs on offer, your budget is not a limitation. To find out more, email info at norscott.co.uk. Norscott, proudly serving customers throughout the UK since 1984. Right, let's get straight into that Hamilton Academical team news then. And I can tell you there is just one change to the Aki side that beat St Mirren, looking to go back to back in the league for the first time in 13 months, believe it or not. So that change sees Kyle Munro drop out and club captain Brian Easton enter the fray. It will be, we reckon, a 3 5 2, although that graphic doesn't quite do the formation justice. That's how we expect Aki's to shape up. They'll be compact, they'll be difficult to break down. They've got the likes of Ross Callaghan, their top goal scorer, buzzing around in there. And Hakim O'Doffin, who's been an extremely effective pickup this season in that holding midfield role. Uh, Crags, where do you see their, their key threats and how do you think they'll approach this one? Will they want to make it a real scrap, a real battle? Well, first and foremost, we're talking about Ross County coming off the back of a good result and good performance at Tanadice. Hamilton are off the back of a great result down at St Mirren. When, if they'd lost the game, looking at the way results went, they would have been in big trouble. So they've managed to dig themselves out. And they're always the perennial club who eventually get themselves out of it. They're leaving it very, very late at this stage of the season. But yes, it will be competitive. It'll be a feisty game. That's the way they want it to be. But with the back three and with the Dolphins sitting in front, that's where if, if Michael Gardine and, and Blair Spittle, if they're playing as inverted wingers and they can try and get in and around a Dolphin, try and draw Jamie Hamilton out, potentially try and draw Bran Easton to come in, and that's when then Jordan White has to look to spin down the side. So as much as their system's fine, County have to try and pick holes in it. But they'll be competitive, they'll put the ball up to you. If you don't match their appetite, you don't match their fight, they will steamroll over the top of you. That's the kind of team they are. I believe County have got better players, but there's no point in being better than the opposition if you don't have the appetite and the willingness to go and do what they do. And then emphasise your game onto theirs. There's no doubt County can win this game tonight, but they have to stand up to what Hamilton put up first of all. Yeah, Callum, the, the games so far this season have been fiendishly close. I think there's been one goal between the sides each time they've met. Um, where do you think County can get at this Aki's team tonight? I think, like, like Craig has touched on there, it's about moving them. I think they're very rigid. They, this way they set up and it's like we're talking before, everyone talks about culture in football and winning cultures and breeding cultures, but they've got this culture of just staying in the league. They, they, they always do it somehow and it's up to us tonight to obviously to, to send them down, that's, that's in the story, but 
I think uh, the, the key will be Jordan attracting players and getting them moving out of position. Um, like get Vigas on the ball, Stephen Kelly on the ball, and then you've got Jordan Tilson with those legs. So I think we like we have the players to win the game, but we've got to make sure we impose ourselves on them and don't just let them settle into the, the structure and pump the ball long and play off second balls and get territory and get free kicks and shots on goal because that's how the, the, the game they would have played last time. That's how they did it. It was long balls, second balls broke and they scored from it. So if we can be solid, but move them about and take control of the game, we've got enough to win it. And do you know what? It, it might not be the game that John would like. It might not be the game that the players would like, as in total football and tip it into midfield and roll back the fullback. It may have to be ugly and scrappy. You may have to throw the ball down the outside of the centre halves. Because Callum will tell you, when you play with a back three, if your wing backs go high, there's space down the outside. So Jordan White has to be in the side of the ball. So if Hamilton are attacking down the right-hand side, I think he's got to be in the right-hand side of the pitch. If the ball breaks, throw it down the same side. Try and stretch their back three. Try and drag them all over the place. But then we speak about the energy of Tilson. We speak about the energy of Kelly, uh, Blair Spittle and Michael Gardine. They've got to get in touch with them. Try and emphasise that four in behind Jordan White. Try and get them at the Hamilton back three. You know, you can expose them. There's no doubt about it. And then that's a little bit of quality. So it may not be pure football, but it's about finding a way to win a game of football that can put you even closer to safety. Yeah. John Hughes made a point of mentioning Ross Callaghan in his pre-match chat with you, Craggs. He's their top scorer, nine goals in the League and Cup this season, although some have come from the penalty spot. He's an increasingly important player for them and he'll be somebody that Kent will need to keep tabs on quite closely, you would think. I'm just going to say he's an old-fashioned midfield player and with the greatest respect, I mean, because he gets himself into the box. Yeah. A lot of midfield players nowadays, Callum, want to play behind the ball. They all yeah. want to influence the game and play the ball square and play the ball into centre forwards and play the ball wide. He's that kind of midfield player that actually wants to get beyond the game. He wants to make penetrating runs, which upsets your back four, yeah. which upsets your two centre halves. You know, we're speaking with Blair Spittle doing it against Dundee United, you know, making a penetrating run across the pitch, and suddenly says, uh, someone says, "Well, I'm not picking him up. He's not my man." And, and Ross Callaghan does that. He finds himself in the box. He finds himself free because several defenders pick up centre forwards. Midfield players don't match the runners. And that's where then he then capitalises. So John's right. Out of possession, Ian Vagas has got to make sure he locks onto him. When County are in possession, try and drag him all over the place and try and pick him off. Yeah. There is, I guess, like it or not, a lot of pressure on Hamilton Ackes tonight, Callum. They are the league's great survivors. They're written off time and time again by us fools in the media. I'm only referring to me here, not you guys. But us fools in the media that like to make silly predictions at the start of the season about who's staying up and who's not. But they've been in the league for, what, six, seven years now? Every year we talk about them as relegation contenders. They always defy the odds. But tonight, if results don't go their way, they could go down. If they lose tonight and Kilmarnock win as well, they're down. That, that puts a bit of pressure onto them as well. I think it does, yeah. I think the, the tag they've got, like we said, is that they always survive. They're indestructible. But um, that, that won't last forever. They have a big turnover of players every year as well, um, which, which isn't helpful. But... Um, it's up to us. It's all about us tonight. Um, we're the ones that want to come out on top and make sure that we seal ourselves in this league. Um, and hopefully results go away down at Kilmarnock as well. And uh, it's all done tonight because uh, it's, it's a massive 90 minutes. Um, and like you say, they can't stay in the league forever. And hopefully it's us. Come, come kick off next season. We're still an SPL club. Um, that's what we all want. And that's what everyone's working hard towards. And, and it all culminates tonight. From yourself, how's this one going to pan out? Well, it's funny... Your home form has been a huge Achilles heel for Ross County, but when they've been good, they've been good. They've beaten Aberdeen 4-1, they've beaten Kilmarnock here 3-2, they've beaten Celtic 1-0. So those last three results when John's been in charge, that should give them a little bit of hope that if they can get their A game on, they can win games more than capable. Defend properly, be rigid out of possession, be hard to play against, let the flair players go and win the game for you. Home win. As I must admit, I've been rather dazzled this evening by your shiny black running shoes, dancing shoes. Um, I'm yeah, going to... Sure dancing shoes, <laughs> golfing shoes, dancing, dancing shoes. shoes. Dancing, dancing shoes, shoes and dance. cardigan, sophisticated knitwear. I like it. <laughs> You'll need them tonight because you're going to have to go and join Rory Hamilton in commentary. We'll leave you there. Enjoy the game, both sets of fans, and we'll see you at halftime. Sometimes you have to search far and wide for the answer. But for creative video production, the answer's on your doorstep. DP Digital Media, the other top team in the Highlands. When I hold the card, I'm standing with my family. When I hold a card, I'm standing with my teammates. 
When I hold the card, I'm standing with my neighbours. When I hold the card, I stand with my brothers and sisters. We're standing with everyone who's had to endure racial prejudice in their lives. Racism, Racism comes in many forms, some clear, some more subtle. It affects not just the victim, but friends, families and entire communities. No one is born with it, and tolerance is taught, but it can be untaught. To bring about change, we can't be afraid to take the first step we feel when we fail to try. We are supporting Show Racism the Red Card, our education charity. Now more than ever, they need your support to give our future generation the tools to challenge prejudice, hatred and discrimination. It's not enough to be not racist, we all must be anti-racist. Education is the key. Help raise funds for the Ross County Youth Academy when you shop, eat out and what's more, at no extra cost to you. Sign up to fantasticfanatics.com and securely register your everyday debit or credit cards. You'll also be automatically entered into ongoing cash prize draws. Retailers include B&Q, Curry's, JD Sports and more, with a percentage going to the Staggies each time you spend. Visit fantasticfanatics.com and help fund the future of Ross County. As a family-owned business, Norscott understand the need for stability, security and comfort. That's why every timber frame kit we supply is built with these in mind. Providing great design flexibility, our homes are entirely customizable to your needs. And with a wide range of adaptable set and bespoke designs on offer, your budget is not a limitation. To find out more, email info at norscott.co.uk. Norscott, proudly serving customers throughout the UK since 1984. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Global Energy Stadium in Dingwall for Ross County against Hamilton Academical. It is going to the wire, and the Staggies with their bid to avoid final day drama. The long, winding season full of ups and downs makes its final stop in Dingwall in the penultimate round of fixtures before Sunday's conclusion. It's a three-way... It's a three-way fight for Premiership survival and avoiding the dreaded 12th place is the first target followed closely by the playoff. Only one of Ross County, Hamilton Academical or Kilmarnock will be completely happy come the conclusion of match day 38. But it's the Staggies in pole position coming into this. If results go their way this evening, 10th place and top flight status could be confirmed here at the Global Energy Stadium this evening. These scenarios, though, are rarely straightforward, and tonight will likely be no different. John Hughes' men are in the heart of a real scrap. They will need to ensure they are up for the fight against a direct rival. And here is the... Ross County starting 11 after one of the best performances of the season. Last time out, John Hughes is able to select the same side that was victorious at Tannadice. Alex Jakovitti has found his goal-scoring form with two in his last three. Well, the link-up between Blair Spittle and Jordan White was crucial against Dundee United. White has scored in each of his last two games and netted his first in county colours against Ackies in the victory in February. As for Hamilton Academical, they're also coming off the back of an important victory and make just the one change from the starting team that won away to St Mirren as Brian Easton replaces Kyle Munro. Well, there was sad news this week after the passing of former Ross County player and supporter Stuart McLennan. And the chairman wrote his thoughts on the website earlier on this week. 